Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I have a question. Is Nightmare Countess ever worth running? What exactly can you expect to get? Well, I threw 350 runs at the wall, so let's see if any of it sticks. First off, why even grind Nightmare Countess? Well, for runes, obviously. But what kind of runes? According to the sources, the highest rune that can be found here is an Io. But potential for Lums and Co's from her normal monster type drop are there. Granted, much more rare. Io's Lums and Co's open up the next tier of rune words, and several of them only require one mid tier rune in pairing with normal mode runes. And most can be pretty beastly. Hells can be found here as well, but their rune words are usually paired with higher tier runes that you find much later. But three Hells do make an Io, so we'll keep that in mind. So how often do Hells and Io's realistically appear? And can I sneak away with a Lum or a Co? Let's go find out! We all know the Countess is found in the Forgotten Tower, located in the Black Marsh of Act 1. Getting through the Black Marsh to find the tower, and navigating the narrow corridors of the tower itself can be a pain. So ideally you will want the Sorceress with her ability to teleport. Even so, it can become ridiculous exploring an entire area just to find the next staircase was right next to the previous one the whole time. So a great tip for navigation is to always travel along the map's perimeter from your character's left shoulder. 9 out of 10 times, this is the way! Each run was usually between 1 and 2 minutes, with the most time-consuming part being navigation of the marsh and tower. Doing this in offline mode would likely cut each run down to a minute, or less depending on your luck with waypoint and tower placement in the marsh, since each area's exploration is set in stone. In getting to the Countess, it took quite a while for the first Io to drop, though Hell started appearing fairly quickly. 71 runs in marks the first Io drop, which seemed to break the seal as a few more runs later, surprisingly, two in a row dropped followed by another three runs later. In the last 20 runs of that particular session, I was graced with three more. It took 70 runs to get going, but I found seven IOs in the last 50 runs. I'd say that's pretty good. The following session was technically better. Over the next 80 runs, I added six more IOs to the collection. The IO drops seem to enjoy clustering together, as again, five IOs dropped in the time span of only 20 runs. Unfortunately, getting from run 200 to 300 was a bit less IO populated. There were eight Hells that dropped, which kind of makes up for it a bit, and the Countess produced a two for one or IO on run 281. But overall, there were only 5 IOs found in those 100 runs. Which isn't terrible, I suppose. But the last 50 runs produced absolutely nothing. 3 Hells dropped. So it counts. But I have to say, there was a solid amount of IOs that dropped in my overall exploits here. And at the end of 350 runs, I found a grand total of 17 IO runes and 20 hell runes. Making IO's drop rate 1 in about 20, and hells were 1 in about 17. The hells actually fell right on par, while IO's were a bit better in drop rate. Sadly, no lums or co's fell. Though, in looking back at the drop chances, I can't exactly say I'm surprised. What the fuck? Along with the Hells and Ios, you can also expect to find majority of these runes versus Nightmare Countess. And in taking Transmution into consideration, you can build yourself some absolutely dominating rune words early on in Nightmare. So in circling back to my original question, it seems the answer is yes! If you're looking for some Ios to use or transmute, throwing an hour or two at Nightmare Countess could very well be worth it. Just make sure you have yourself some solid bases. One final note, if you're an insane person like me and wanted to know what 350 runs worth of Nightmare Countess runes transmutes up to, 
click the next video. Also, consider hitting that like button, and remember to subscribe for more fun Diablo and other ARPG gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.